much mark it's so experimental today i love it uh, hello everyone welcome to the house welcome to today's resident circle uh, my name is monica i'm the head of curation and community at the house and today we actually have a very special session uh, brought to you for us from the other side of uh, the world in kyoto in japan actually where it's evening time hosted by our uh, long-standing friends and partners uh, from mui lab it's a technology design startup uh, also founded in 2017 like the house and they're striving to bring the japanese concept of uh, harmony mui shizen which they're going to talk about more uh, in a bit as the foundation uh, for everything that they do uh, and how they go about their work and their their business, redefining the relationship between humans, tech, and nature. And uh, they've been active since uh, 2020, our, our virtual festival, uh, The Great Wave, where they started the first local uh, chamber uh, activity um, alongside our festival. And then last year as well, all around the theme of calm technology. So we're very happy uh, to have them back in today's uh, resident circle again. And with that, I'm going to hand over, uh, not use too much of uh, the time, and uh, welcome Robin from uh, Mulab. And thank you all for being here. And I would say over to Kyoto. You. Um, I hope, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Thank you for the very warm uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Robin, and I'll be the host today uh, with the, the talk we're having here at Mui Lab. So we're here in, uh, in Kyoto, Japan, and uh, we're a, a, a Japanese technology startup um, that does uh, smart home devices. So uh, we'll have uh, some slides come up uh, shortly for you to see. So, um, great. So um, we were started, as Monica said, in 2017. And so we've been um, basically in the heart of Kyoto, um, designing uh, uh, smart home devices based on comp technology. And what you know, Monica mentioned as well, Mui Shizen. So Mui Shizen will try to delve in it today and try to uh, explain it <laughs> to everybody here. Um, and so you see, we focus on natural materials and simple user interfaces. So we really think that uh, simplicity is key um, in technology, and we can think we can really facilitate um, uh, simple interactions uh, for everyday life. So this is a little introduction video for you to see what we do. Um, and you can see this uh, is, our, is our main product. We call it the Mui board. And so it's a, it's a smart home hub. Um, and here we have a few additional uh, uh, images for you to see. Um, and we've also done, uh, we've, we're, we're bridging the gap now between spaces. We not only do the home, but we do also workspaces and uh, uh, retail and all of those things. So now I want to introduce our guest that we have today <laughs> or who will be joining our, our, our session. So um, uh, we have uh, today with us uh, Hirobe, Mune, and uh, Amber. So why don't, uh, we'll start with uh, Mune. Uh, to introduce. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. So my name is Mune Kusato, and uh, I'm a, a CXO, the Chief Experience Officer of Meetup. So uh, I'm working on like, you know, R&D and then, you know, bridging that uh, experience, designing and technology uh, at Meetup. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Hirobe the creative director from Mirabo. I'm the co-founder, so I'm thinking about the always the Mui Shizen. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully we can answer, we can, yeah. we can try to have Mui I Shizen. I try. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, 
Uh, hi, my name is Amber Case. I'm the author of Calm Technology, which is a framework for having technology and human harmony. And I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and so for some more context, Amber has been with us um, this week uh, visiting in Japan. So um, kind of a secondary goal of this talk is to also get Amber's perspective. So as the person who kind of revitalized the idea of comp technology, um, uh, we'll probably uh, also delve deep on that. So uh, maybe since you're our guest, I want to ask you, um, what is comp technology and what are the, the underlying principles uh, in comp technology? Sure. Uh, comp technology is about providing information to people without overburdening them. Uh, Mark Weiser and John Seeley Brown wrote a paper called The Coming Age of Calm Technology in the 90s, and they said at some point technology will be very cheap and the expensive thing will be our attention. So how technology works with or against our attention will make or break the future of technology. Right. So they created a set of, of principles. Um, for instance, technology should require the least amount of attention uh, and only when necessary. But a lot of the technology's promise right now is to give us more free time, but it ends up like a gas uh, expanding to fit all available right. social space. And so we have to ask, like, how do we have technology work alongside us mm -hmm. so that we can have more human time again? Uh, and there's several other principles about how to do that. That means that the technology is not in your face all the time and uses more of like a gradient style right. calm approach. Um, so when I found out that uh, one of the founders of this had died and couldn't even see the message that he had predicted, um, I ended up trying to work on this concept and write a short book. Right. Uh, at the time, no one really cared about alerts, <laughs> but now a lot of people care about no alerts. Cares. So this has been making its way into the kind of techno-social fabric. Right, right. And, and so what, what, if, what for you is like one of the top principles like, cause there's, there's, you've written that there's about eight principles, mm -hmm. which for you is like, like your favorite, the one really people should try to come away from. Yeah. Uh, I think my favorite principle is technology can communicate, but it mm. doesn't need to speak. Right. I think in film television, we have this idea of a technology that has a human voice. Right. And we don't expect a dog to act like a human. Why should we be expecting a machine to act like a human as well? It's more of a different species, like a companion species. And so we have to look at why are we using this like long human voice to talk with us? That's not necessary all the time. Right. Uh, and then what other senses can we use? So if we have a lot of primary attention in front of us, that's very high resolution. Um, it's very burdening to switch our attention from something in the side to in front of us. And driving in a car is all about making use of this attention right in front of you. Um, but if we look at that in the same way, instead of having technology speak to us with a human voice, we could use a small light. We can use a small harmonious sound. And that means that we can still get the information in a low resolution way, right. but it's not dragging all of our attention into it. Right. And when we have a limited time and attention in our lives, like this becomes more and more precious. Mm -hmm. So just having something a little bit more smooth can really make a difference. Not just like going on a bus and not having a human voice speak to you, but uh, somebody who has to work on that bus and hear the same thing constantly. Um, there are a couple of people who tried to deal with this. For instance, Brian Eno got upset about thinking about people listening the same thing all the time. Right. So he made some things like music for airports, which was this like non repeating soundtrack. Uh, that wouldn't dull the mind. Um, there's been a few artists that have tried to work on this, but that's probably my favorite principle, just because it's about how how our attention is is spent um, and how we can have just a better daily mundane right. experience. Right. And does that does that resonate with uh, with you, Mune, for example? That like our, our our free time is so taken up that we try now to to, to take a more balanced approach. Uh, yes, yes, for sure. So yeah, uh, you know, I, I've been working in the field of uh, human computer interaction as a researcher, and I worked on some uh, commercial products development. And then, um, yeah, so there's a huge uh, kind of trend, you know, powers of that, you know, digital technologies or devices are intruding to our daily space and time. So yeah, that's, uh, that's we really need to find out a way to how we can create uh, technology or you know design uh, you know kind of principles to you know right. to tackle that 
Right. And Hirobe, what are, what are for you, like from, you know, Mui Lao's perspective, you know, what are maybe some principles that we really try to, to, to focus on? Yeah, we have some um, the design uh, principles to the six principles, but my uh, most important principle is the first one is the inspiring the calm movements. So we're the existing real life. So and also the, the I'm looking at the nature from the some information, very good information, very simple like a fr from the flowers right. so um when i go to the office i'm ride bike so i always think about the ride the my uh my hometown the river around side so e every day every time the, the tiny changes yeah. so i'm look look at some the the notice from that so it's very important things so we can feel right. the tiny changes every Every, every day, day, every time. So that's a Japanese like a season to affect it some him my myself. Yeah. You're... So I wanted to make the uh, like technology right. to the real uh, real existing real life, right. everyday life. Right. So it's my so. Well, yep, this is a perfect transition <laughs> into um, the, the second component we want to try to introduce to everybody um, is uh, Mui Shizen. So um, uh, Mui Shizen is, uh, is a very deep, it's a Taoist concept originally from China, but it's used, uh, we use it at Mui a lot. Um, and it sort of has multiple definitions. Hirobe, do you want to try to expand a bit on what, you know, you talked a little bit about nature mm. and feeling. Mm. Um, how does that how does Mui Shizen connect to that? Mm. So you mean uh, how how we can uh, so using to the our yeah so product? so so more what what is what is this what do you think Mui Shizen mm. stands yeah. for? Yeah. So, uh, for the the piece of wood things. So, so I'm the look at the so some simple like a piece of wood that are hanging on the wall in front of the, the, the garden. Right. So I look at that, so very simple uh, plate, and it shows the, the, for the information for the, the living there. So it shows that it's done. Right. It's done for the, the pouring water to the flower. So because the, that flowers need to be once a day, the, not more, not a simple least. reminder. Yeah. Right. So and so it, anyone the so pulling the water to the flowers, the change to the it's done. It's a very simple signal. But I I look at that. So it's a very digital. So, but not it it doesn't need to the electricity. So yeah. turn on the reverse to the plate, but very are uh, simple and that it communicate with the living each other so very the good uh the opportunity opportunity or right. the sense right well, i, I yeah. want to do the integrate to do the our product right so, so for a yeah. bit more context um we pulled up the the slide for people to see so um this is actually uh as hirobe said i'll try to to, to rephrase a little bit um as the plants are watered you have a simple piece of uh, block wood um, that will just notice people uh, tell them if it's been watered or not. So this is based, this is essentially in, in, in one way, our approach um, to, uh, uh, to technology is to really make it as simple as possible for people uh, uh, to understand, to understand uh, feedback. Um, so uh, I think now's a good time to introduce a bit our general theme, um, which is uh, introducing what we, we just talked about, Japanese aesthetics, or we like to call Mushizen, into uh, uh, calm technology. Um, so um, I think something we can uh, talk about very briefly, and I think, Amber, I think you really latched on to this, since we're talking about uh, components. Um, so in Japan, you have, in uh, many traditional gardens, you have these stones that are wrapped in um, a string and that they're placed in areas where uh, people are not supposed to go. So do you want to expand a bit on that? Yeah. You like it a lot, so. Yeah, well, 
just noticing this simple stone that's that's wrapped uh, in some rope. Uh, it's just marking off areas where you shouldn't go in a garden. But it's so simple because it's made of local materials. Uh, it harmonizes with the environment, but it's not too loud. So you would see someone, a disharmonious sign is very uh, overt. It says, stop, keep out, so much text. Uh, in, and when you see it, it's almost violent. It's like, you're in your environment, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful ocean or a lake, it's keep out, you know, it's just a huge sign. Um, but instead you have this beautiful stone. And I, I feel like calm technology is like that. Like, how do you have harmonious colors shapes and things that are similar to the environment that can give a message in a in a calm way that is just there and once you learn how to notice it it's it's like this soft punctuation not this hard explanation point <laughs> we we don't I, I think there's a lot of our life that we're used to having these like extremes um you know it's either this event or this it's just so intense and so our amygdala in our brain is constantly firing and actually like increasing in size and we get more irritable we lose focus um but just smoothing some of these just pieces of information in our environment and making them out of materials closer to us or closer right. to that environment is such a powerful and elegant way to get the same information across without being so heavy handed. Uh, and I think things that are so overt are just becoming tiresome. There's too many of these messages out there. And if you take it to the hospital, for instance, like doctors and nurses can hear between 500 and 10,000 alerts a day. Uh, they're often really high pitched, high frequency alerts. Over time, the brain gets used to those and it starts to ignore them. Um, and this is really unfortunate. Like each of these stones is interesting they're all different. It's not the same manufactured stone. Uh, every garden you go to, there's a different way of showing it. So they're, they're visually interesting. Um, so your brain just does, it knows what it is, but it doesn't get used to it in a way that you just walk right through, you know? Right. But so, um, you know, you're saying that we become, you know, more irritable. And so, <laughs> you know, this recalibration, right? That That's kind of what I guess Mui tries to do, right? Mm -hmm. Mui Lab, we're trying to do that. I mean, how um, have we tried how we simplifying or creating as as uh, as as Amber said, you know, a softer type of in interaction or a softer type of you know message, you know, mm -hmm. while everything around us is so loud, right? Mm -hmm. So like we have we show the movie board, it's super subtle, super simple, but we still living with our phones with alerts every day, right? Like how 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 can we balance that? Yeah, well, you know. That's a that's a very good question, and you know it's a big uh, you know challenge we are you know tackling, tackling actually. But you know, so yeah, so as a you know general rule, so we try to reduce the amount of information, of course, and then say you know how we harmonize our you know say interface or product information into the space. Yeah, you know the other day we visited a a, a monk, the monk uh, Taka Kawakami, and he mentioned about. Uh, how slow stimuli or, you know, uh, stimuli through uh, multimodal, you know, uh, five senses are really important. So, you know, visual stimuli or uh, audio stimuli is really strong and kind of logical information. And then, you know, kind of Western culture is really based on that. Uh, but, you know, uh, in Kyoto or maybe, you know, Far East culture is we really, uh, um, consider like, uh, you know, muscular stimuli or, uh, you know, body sensation really important. And then like, you know, the garden, uh, the picture is shown here. So uh, how we uh, make, make the people to pay attention to the, your surroundings and not your individual self. So letting them notice that you are part of the uh, surroundings and nature and then become uh, more aware of right. what you they feel. And, and that's so, Mu Shizen. Yes, right? exactly. That's yeah. Mu Shizen, right? <laughs> and then, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a really hard concept to digest if you don't feel it, right. uh, mm -hmm. which is why it was really interesting to go visit these monks. And then also, I've been studying Taoism, things like that. But it's, it's not like this 
it's not this competition to like be calm or like be the best Buddhist. Like it's not about that. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, a good technology is passed through like a window. You don't focus on the window. You focus on what's outside of the window. When you use a hammer, you focus on the nail, not the hammer. And when you're in a, in a garden, you are part of the garden. There's not a separation. And that feeling of like being in your body and being a part of your surroundings, like is this collective is really, really special. Now, when we look at building technology that fits into the environment, it should, there's a lot of care that needs to be put into it, um, but it should feel like that. And that's really hard to do. That's really nuanced. And I, and I, and I would say it's, it's easy to say like, oh, this is softer technology. It's not soft. It's, it's definitely hard. It's made of hardwood. <laughs> it, it's very complicated, but it's nuanced. And I think this is something that we've lost our ability to see these small nuances in nature. Like every day a flower changes every day there, you know, there's what 72 micro seasons. There's all these micro seasons that we can look at. Um, and so when we, when we remember that there's these small changes and we get used to those again, then we can make these really harmonious pieces of technology. Like even looking at, like you go to a museum and you see this like beautiful exhibit full of these gorgeous things. And then there's like a giant fire alarm sign, <laughs> or there's a, you know, there's like an air conditioning system that's this really loud sound. It's all about all of the technology in the environment can be harmonized with the environment. That air conditioning system could be put behind a beautiful wooden grate, and it could be made so that the motor sounds less, so that when you're in there, you can actually be part of that environment. There's, there's so many situations in which we have a beautiful environment and we have this history or we have this design, we have this beautiful restaurant or this like gorgeous office or a playground. And then there's this piece of just technology that doesn't, that doesn't fit in. Um, and, it, and it's funny how we don't consider that we could have technology that's also really beautiful and harmonious. And I think, uh, I think movies have tried to make this, this, for the first time I've seen this kind of harmonious technology that's not just, you know, a beautiful chair um it's embedding some information in it that's that's not overburdening and not causing you to lose your focus so right. it's really interesting nuance to yeah to see yeah so so i mean like for example i want to ask you a bit so how do we manage to do balance you know the requirements right of technology and but also using you know a, a wood surface mm. you know right it's it's not the the most obvious <laughs> choice but it's it's yeah. definitely more you know um, uh, natural. So, yeah. so my the I like the the calm technology principle. The the technology should be uh, peripheral. The so it's human that we are constrained, con focused, concentrate to the to the job to the the behave something. So look at the look at the window, the open the curtain. So we can see the outside scenery. So the mui-board should the peripheral, the, the next level, next information that we can see the outside, the, the look at, so think about the weather, today's weather. It's the, not so it's, I'm um, think about that, but the supported using the technology. So second, the peripheral technology, we, uh, using that so my my so prioritize or something so my peripheral is many many things but so we should harmonize to in the environment so like uh, interior so where well, i'm using that uh material for very common using the interior material wood soften fabrics or something that so and also one point, it's a very uh, fresh me to touch in, touch, we, the, our, the board is uh, sensitive to the touch. So it's, uh, we can touch the information. It's alive. Yeah. It's like, like alive. Yeah. You know, yeah. Very good. <laughs> so it's the connecting the internet. So something to feeling to very, the, 
how can I say, the tact tactile, tactile. Uh, we can feel very so split, subtle. The grain feel. and the, the... Yeah, and the wood, wood surface very are informative. So we can feel the many information from that and connect to the internet world. Right. So it's very, the first is me. So I'm using that material, yeah. the fir first. Yeah. And so Mune, how, how do you, what, what kind of, um, like the, like uh, Mune was saying, you know, the, the different, you know, you get the texture, the feeling of the material. And so how do you reconcile, for example, the, you know, notification or the, or these different outputs from, from the device? Like, like what, what are some principles or some, the, the main, the, the main type of um, display or output, like what types um, do do we did you consider or do you think are the most important? Um, you mean important for uh, the important channel for that or important information? Yeah, yeah. So for example, you know, mm -hmm. Mune was saying how it's so important to have right the the tactile feel of wood sure, sure. that it's alive, right? Yeah. But you saw the screen under there, right? Mm -hmm. With with different responses, right? So what are what are for you the most like so maybe some existing ones that we use. Um, uh, that stand out to you? So, um, well, you know, for with our, our you know, we both right, it's just right here. So, you know, yeah, when you access to the information, you know, it's visual, you know, text, logical information, but you uh, need to touch the wood surface and then you feel the, you know, the wood texture, right? So then usually, you know, the, the plain uh, smartphone touch panel doesn't have a, no, almost like, a, you know, no, texture, right? So then you directly get that digital information, logical right. information injected into your brain, kind of. But now you feel the texture, uh, uh, nevertheless you want to or not, and actually today it's raining uh, in Kyoto, and then I feel the humidity, you know, the different humidity, right? So then you become big, uh, kind of careful about your body and the surroundings, and then kind of you, you can reduce amount of such logical informations that people users are getting and then uh, letting them more uh, kind of uh, you know aware of their body or surroundings and the connection with the nature like that right. so I think that's how we design uh, the humidity part that I that, that, that's I, I haven't heard that before but that that's really good it's true yeah because the wood will react to uh, mm -hmm. to the different to the to, you know it's so subtle but it's mm -hmm. uh, I think like with contact that's definitely something that uh, really is a super important right? mm -hmm. so um, yes so um, Amber I think I want to talk a little about you know your experience so far in Japan it's been what three four years <laughs> it's been it's been a, a long time yeah it's been yeah since 2019 last visit yeah, yeah you have a whole office so it's yeah great. Um, <laughs> Uh, I grew up with parents who were broadcast engineers, so right. they put television on the air and we had several Japanese friends and we we traded a lot of culture back and forth. Um, I didn't really grow up around a lot of Americans because everything was really loud. I was very sensitive to like sound and sight. Uh, I like to be outside a lot and then I got a computer and then I got sucked into the computer. So part of my life has been really wanting to have depth um, and really understand like the principles of things like color <laughs> and texture. Um, my friend and I sometimes run these sensory design workshops and part of it is going through your life and looking at some of the best experiences that you have. Um, we can categorize experiences into what the Greeks call chronos time, which is very industrial time. You have the same thing happening again and again. You wake up at eight and you have this meeting and you it's do routine, this thing. repetitive, yeah. very repetitive, but very industrialized. Right. Not like waking up, pulling open the curtain and looking at the sun uh, and seeing that flood your room. That's that's the opposite. Right. So we have chronos, this industrial time. And then Kairos time is like this human time. Mm. It's really, really special time, like the time that you remember on your deathbed of like falling in love, watching a sunset. Um, and so this, 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 this kind of tug of war where 
when we get interrupted by one of these, it sends us right into Kronos time. Mm. But when we're tapping wood on a wall, <laughs> uh, it's more of a Kairos time, right? We're still getting some information, but I think the principles of, of you know, Mui Shi Zen, like, take this information, put it into your environment, and allow yourself to be yourself. It, it's nearly like a, a, it's not, of course, 100%, but it's yeah. a bit like you're, you're talking about Kairos time in, 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 some, in yeah. some sense, right? In some very yeah. simple way. Yeah. But it definitely, it, it maps yeah. onto that. Yeah, I think there's this this idea that I think every every culture has kind of a cartoon idea about another culture. Sure. And and I just say that because it's flat, right? It's there isn't a lot of depth. Because it takes a long time to like really understand how geography helps people act or like how history, how food, how culture, how ritual. And so for me it's always about what's something new and interesting I can learn? Just really simple, mundane things, right? Like going into a tea ceremony, which is on the way in, it's a path that curves, so you can't see what's going to happen. You can have a really short garden path that way, but because there's a curve, it seems longer, right? Really simple. And then all of it's green, right. so that when you go into the tea room, you notice the flowers. It's that contrast. So it's prepping yourself for an experience, getting your brain into a certain shape, and then you have this experience. So there's so much priming, right? right? There's concepts of like omotenashi, like this mm -hmm. idea of having things for someone. And, and, and so there's all these really little nuanced, special things that you don't notice. And I feel like we can learn from, from all of these small things. Um, and I think then the other side is like, thinking about japan is like oh it's all this neon and creep uh, it's like yeah, wait 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 wait, wait, wait. Contrast, yeah everything is a contrast but to also think about like nature's nature alongside people and that effect yeah. and how we can learn from nature how nature's figured it out computationally for millions of years like what can we learn from that and i guess like the last piece is not considering ourselves different from nature and if we consider that how would we build technology? How would we live our lives? Um, right. Because that's like, it's just, if we can get different perspectives right. in general, I think we can design better. Right. Um, there's a beautiful term, or actually kind of a strange term called cosmotechnics. Okay. It's the idea that every culture has its own approach to technology and mm. tools. Um, and I think a lot of the world has this idea that Silicon Valley produces technology when it's not true. Every culture produces technology. Um, and if we if we look at that and say, actually, let's not have everyone adopt the same thing, but like see how people can can change something, then we can get really inspired from all these different approaches right. and and share them um, instead of assuming that the computer is the way to do a thing right. or a laptop is the certain way. Because in the 70s, it was you were supposed to have this in your environment with you. It right. wasn't supposed to be this flat screen. Right. So. I'm just really excited that there are people trying to do things differently right. because it's really hard to do a thing differently right now because there, there is a dominant narrative that tech should be a certain way. Right. So that's, I, I guess that's why I'm or so every, fond. every screen should be an LCD screen. Yeah, right? every screen right. should have multicolors and the color of the future is blue. High resolution, high yeah. resolution, right. Just that, just saying in movies and films, the color of the future is blue. Wait, wait. Maybe it's not. Maybe we don't want to be surrounded by bright blue and bright time. white LED lights. What if we want to have like harmonious colored lights, like a cozy room, right? So it's really important to re-question these things and then show mm. examples where something could be different. Right. right. Yeah, that, <laughs> thank you. Awesome response. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think you, one piece of your answer, you talked about like mundane actions, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think you, you talked a little bit about, you know, some, some little detailed triggers you looked at. Mm -hmm. So like Hiro Ben Mune, what are some like recently for you, like some mundane actions that that for you like stand out or uh, you might, you know, with Amber or. or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can talk about the show or. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's fine. That was my transition. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, okay. so yeah, so uh, uh, we, um, so, yeah, we, so we, we focus as Mui, we focus on um, uh, mundane actions a lot. You know, it's little things, it's little things every day. You know, we've talked that about our existing product, the Mui board. 
And so we want to show um, we have uh, this uh, June. Uh, Mui Lab is exhibiting in Milan um, at, uh, at the, the Fruity Salone. So um, we actually are sitting right now in uh, uh, basically the, the kind of the same setup we will be showing in, uh, in Milano. We'll be um, uh, showcasing at a venue called Super Studios. And um, the main intent here or the main focus is uh, to uh, see how we can connect uh, you know, IoT to the most simple uh, mundane actions that you do every day. So it's really, it's, it's a very kind of surprising and charming uh, exhibit, I think. Um, and uh, we focus on three minute interactions. So you've seen in the video here, um, we focus on a curtain opening. There's a reaction from the MUI board. Lights turn on as you wipe the table. And then you also have, when you move flowers from one table to the other, you get a uh, sound um, appearing from nowhere. So, uh, yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, okay, Kirobe, ambient. ambiently, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I know, <laughs> um, but yeah. here, yeah. So that's uh, the first, but we can start to the planning to the uh, round February this year. So I, so I and Mune and the think about the same things. So the in front of our office, uh, the uh, across the road to the the Japanese sushi restaurant. Right. So we are here in the two years. So sometimes we are looking at the the women. She uh, preparing the for the uh, opening. Right. So so in the around the five I'm opening the before so she uh, first in the uh how can I say sw swiping roads yeah, yeah washing and washing and the uh swiping the doors cleaning it and and finally she took took the plant and in front of the door right. so that that is a very the uh, finally it's very beautiful right it's a very harmony right. and so the waiting for the guest that right. restaurant it's a sign so, it's a sign, sign yeah. yeah and and the coming to the guests and the very very good good yeah yeah so sceneries and uh they're talking about that something move something swipe the very that she is concentrate to the the preparing for the restaurant so something yeah feeling yeah to, to connect to the internet for the everything so that that the behavior connect to if if that behavior connect to the internet, what to do? What we do? That is the first point. To yeah. the yeah yeah please yeah. please yeah. So yeah, it's kind of uh so it's kind of similar in function wise. It's uh, very similar or same as uh, you know already available smart home IoT tech, but. The, the the big difference is you know we it's not automation technology right so it's not you uh, call the agent to you know turn on the light or you know turn on the tv uh, in a series like that so but it's rather you do your mundane everyday actions uh, and you know interacting with your uh, say favorite everyday uh, objects and also uh, moving your you know body and so on the sequence uh, is really important right so uh, through so say for example the morning routine, uh, you uh, by you know wiping the table or uh, making a tea maybe, so you gradually uh, getting ready for the day, and then also the uh, home, the house will be warming ready for the day. So we really like that kind of moment and also kind of flow of the time. So how, yeah. So for this exhibition, uh, we are showing how the uh, the future of the smart technology should be like not harming uh, our lives right yeah uh, that, that's um i think the yeah so we'll be so yes here you can see on the screen now so we'll be actually showing at uh, the venue called super studio so uh we have we know a lot of people who will be going a lot of friends so uh, we hope um you know if you're interested that uh you can come and visit us you don't hesitate to, uh, to contact us. You can scan the QR code and you can uh, go on our website and see, get more information on the exhibit. We briefly showed a video and maybe it's a bit limited, but um, I hope uh, that, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, 
Uh, I think before we close, uh, I'd like just to ask Amber. So, what what was your favorite moment in Japan? What was your biggest takeaway after three years? <laughs> after three years, um, you know, I, I guess I have to say a little bit about this exhibit really quickly. Is that like when you use a IoT device like an Alexa, you have to tell it what to do, and sometimes it does something for you. Uh, like the idea of automation is trying to do something for you without your permission, like it, it, it's, it's doing too much, right? Mm -hmm. But the idea of having like harmony alongside technology, like you have to give something to Google in order for a result to happen and then you're choosing. So with this idea is that the curtain is the control, wiping the table is the control. It's not just mm -hmm. this idea. I think for me, it's, it's a really interesting approach to IoT, because again, you're in control. I think there's a lot, I think that's really in harmony with all of the things that I'm seeing, which is not, it's either this or that. It's this uh, gradient, right. like from the tea ceremonies to the temples to everyday life, like there are these small attention to detail. And when we make IoT devices, people who don't pay attention to detail at scale, it just, it fails in these like awful black and white ways, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it's just like alive or dead. Um, but one of the principles of Calm Tech is to, to still work even when it fails, like an escalator when it breaks becomes stairs. Uh, so how can things fail beautifully? How can we make mm -hmm. failure a beautiful experience? How can we make it so that small things mean something more? So I guess that's the, the kind of takeaway is this dedication to detail and right. like seeing something and noticing more than just listening to somebody speak. Um, it's just like being able to be attuned to the environment, like how refreshing that is right. um, and how you can get more into Kairos time and still do something in your life. Get more in Mushiza. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Great. Um, so I think our time is up or nearly up. So uh, I hope everybody had a really good time. Um, it was definitely, I think, really enjoyable for us. <laughs> we don't do these often. Um, uh, so we hope we can make this a series. And um, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for all these um, really inspiring uh, thoughts and attention to detail, to nuance, uh, and the beauty in the mundane. Um, so thank you for, for sharing uh, and for hosting this session, Amber, Hirobe, Mune, and Robin, as well as everyone uh, at the MuiLab team. And I have to say the principle of uh, Mui Shizan, you, you even made it possible to bring this to this Zoom <laughs> meeting, which is kind of impossible, uh, I thought, until to this day. So thank you also for, for that. Um, and with that, we'll close this uh, resident circle. If uh, any one of you who are here uh, in other places and cities of uh, the house community are you know, equally inspired uh, to host such uh, meetups, whether in person or uh, virtual, we are going to bring back the house moments from only chambers of beautiful business uh, to activate the, all of the local uh, hubs that we have all around the world. Uh, so do get in touch if you would like that. And with that, uh, Mark, over to you for a little bit of music and thank you again. <laughs>